Hey guys, welcome back. It's Hetty, and for today's video, I'm actually doing a collaboration with Will from Unmask Art. And I've been wanting to do a collab with him for a while now, but I never got the nerve to actually message him because I thought my channel was just a little too small and he comments on my videos a lot but I was just a bit nervous and so he told me he'd actually been waiting for me to message him um, to sort out a collab so yeah that was a bit fun but um, he normally uploads about three to four times a week I think and he does really cool live streams as well which sadly I keep missing those but and you should definitely go and check out his channel if you haven't already. He's done a couple of collabs now with um, Claire from Black Summer Colouring and he did one with Christina from Hit Art. So you should go and have a look at those ones because he did because we're doing the Coffee with Friends one and he's done that with them as well and they look really cool. But my favorite things he does is his landscapes they are really cool and he's just got some soft pastels as well and the work he's been doing is like even though he's only just started using them he looks like he's been doing it for ages so yeah but anyway on to my half of the collab i originally thought of doing like a japanese coffee shop sort of thing and i was gonna do a mix of old and modern so like the old wooden windows and a lady in a kimono but then I just thought that the pose was very uh, cliched I guess because he sends out a template for us to work from so then the pictures can match up like just with the table and the uh, mirror or window whichever you use it as or picture um, but I decided to go against using a proper chair and <laughs> I wanted to do um, an underwater theme as you can see so I went with the mermaid and having her sit on the table which was quite awkward to draw but it turned out okay I'm quite happy with how the post came out so yeah and I wanted to do this piece in my watercolours as well because as I've mentioned many times my blue markers are all pretty much dead now and I need to get new ones but I thought it would work really well in watercolour and it took me a few times to even draw out the template on the watercolour paper to get the Im image down. So that took a good half an hour to an hour or so, just making sure it was alright. I mean, I know I could tweak it on Photoshop, but I wanted to get the basics down as close as I could. But I decided to put some seaweed at the bottom, like it's growing up the table, to try and give a little more depth to the piece, to make it look more like it's underwater, other than the obvious blue and mermaids and jellyfish. But I thought it, the gradient to the dark to the light blue, and the mix of the different tones of green for the seaweed, I thought it would give a little bit more depth to the piece. So it was actually quite nice to just do the fine brushwork. Because it's been a, a long time since I've done something like that, so it was quite therapeutic for me. And then it came to doing the little window, and I was really confused of what I was going to do at first, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to go against the image itself because of her being underwater, so I thought I'd do like a cityscape in there. Still like it's underwater, out, but it's a full city instead, so I found a picture of Shibuya from Tokyo, the crossing, and I wanted to draw something based off of that, not not completely perfect, but similar. And yeah, that was interesting because I'm not very good at doing um, cityscapes. It's definitely something I need to practice doing. So, um, and I did have a little bit of problem with my masking fluid when I was doing the picture as well because sometimes it was um, peeling the actual paper off, and I think because I was being a little too impatient and not waiting for the paper to dry completely and the paint so that was not fun to try and sort out but it didn't ruin it luckily I've had much worse situations with that before and luckily it didn't do it really much on the mermaid but, but for the colours for the actual mermaid I was really struggling what to do so I ended up asking um, Claire and Evie and Christina because we've got like a little group chat thing going on and I asked them like if they had any ideas of what I could do because I want I think I was just at a standstill where I was like I want it to stand out but I don't want it to be too because my typical go-to is like Ariel from The Little Mermaid but then because of the background obviously that 
teal coloured tail wouldn't work and I still went with a reddish kind of colour for the hair, it was a like a deep pink but um, I think it was Claire that said first that doing the hot colours compared to the cold colours of the background would work really well and I'm like yes, yes it will so we agreed on uh, orange tail and pink hair, well I thought pink because I didn't really want to do red so I thought you know what I'll go pink and then uh, Evie said it kind of ties in the mermaid and the jellyfish together because the colours match so I'm quite happy with how that turned out and trying to get a texture for the scales was a new thing for me because I have painted mermaids in watercolour before but I wanted to try and make this one even more detailed than them so it was just kind of playing with it a bit I was pushing my watercolour skills with this one and really trying to experiment and do the best I could and then I ended up fighting against natural light because in Britain we don't have many sunny days so I actually left the curtains open for once because it was overcast outside so I didn't need to worry about it and the sun came out and blinded out the picture for the video which wasn't fun and then I closed one curtain and it came back and it just got worse so I ended up having to close them both which did help so that was good but it yeah as you can see it just kind of washed it out and I didn't notice until I'd done a whole clip and yeah <laughs> I need to pay more attention to that next time because apparently Britain now has more sunny weather <sighs> I say that though the day after it like just threw it down and it was insanely windy but hey hey that's British that's Britain for you you, you just can't judge it um, I found the jellyfish a little difficult to do because I normally paint these in acrylics because that's just what I prefer so to try and help it was more like the trying to get the tail the tentacles whatever they yeah those things it was trying to get them to show up on because it was such a light background and I was just going to use the white gel pen to do it and you just they um, they didn't have enough definition so I ended up going in with a bit of the ink that I used in the background but less diluted and to give a few of them a bit of a shadow which I did around the main body of the jellyfish themselves as well and I know not all jellyfish are like rainbow coloured but I like doing them rainbow coloured which is why these ones are um, but it was quite fun trying to do them in watercolour it definitely helped going over with my um, Prismacolor, Polychroma, Prismacolor, yeah, Prismacolor pencils. Um, because it just gave them a little bit more vibrancy in the colour, um, especially like the yellow, because it didn't want to show up too well over the teal ink background. But I'm actually really happy with how this piece came out, and every time Will does one of these collabs it really amazes me because somehow they always match even though like we don't see each other's pieces until they're finished like we've got no idea at all what the other person's doing somehow they always seem to work like when Claire did it they both did a historical piece and I mean mine and Will's this time don't link directly like that but the colours match really well which is pretty cool so you should definitely check out his half because it's so cool <laughs> but yeah um, and I ended up having to go over a lot of it the mermaid with my white gel pen and then reapplying some of the watercolour or the ink because my masking fluid wasn't solid so some of the background colour had got through especially on the tail I didn't do it far enough down like that I wanted because I thought it would look better if the tail actually came off the page so I ended up having to go in and fix that, those little bits and just general tidying up I guess but I think the whole piece came together a lot better after I got the white gel pen on it more and my pencil crayons because it, it just tidied everything up and it, there's like your normal frustrating things that happens with watercolour like with the eyes it bled into the skin tone because I was just impatient um, but luckily it's easy to fix so 
but I have to say I'm in love with this pink colour. It was a mix of one of my, I think it's called Rose Matter Hue um, watercolour and then I used the Winsor & Newton inks that Christina got me for the Christmas collaboration and I used the purple out of that and that purple is still like a really amazing colour. <laughs> it's just so vibrant. But then uh, originally I wasn't going to actually do a line art for the piece but I thought it just needed, especially on the mermaid, it really needed to have that little bit more definition and just to bring her out of the background a bit. And my husband actually got me a new brush pen which is the Kuretake Zig in Peacock Blue and I was just wondering like which piece to actually use this on first and well this one worked because it was in blue instead of black because I didn't want the harshness of the black but this is still quite a dark blue and it's a lot like the other Kuretake brush pen he got me which has got a really soft tip which I did show in one of my fan art feb videos but compared to the pentel brush pen these ones have it is a proper brush knit tip but they're very they're a lot softer and they're shorter which is i think a problem with the pentel one is because it's got the longer bristles it gives it puts out a lot more ink which is a lot harder to control whereas these it's just the right amount for me anyway and it just made it really I mean some of the parts I just got carried away and I had to thicken some of the lines but I think they all actually worked well for the piece and yeah I just I love doing hair with brush pens as well it makes it so easy um, but we're coming up to the end of the video now so I hope you enjoy the video and I'm super proud of this piece you should definitely go and check out Will's and I will leave a link to that in the description box below and yeah, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.